When you think of archaeology, you might think of the standing remains of Stonehenge or the pyramids in, G in Egypt. But most archaeology is actually hidden underground. So how do we find archaeology? You can use excavation or technology. And when I was doing my master's degree in archaeology here in Southampton, I was most excited with airborne LiDAR technology. This laser scanning is captured from airplanes and it captures a 3D point cloud of the landscape. And to detect archaeology, we remove the vegetation, the trees and the undergrowth, and we are left with the bare terrain. And this way, we can find earthworks through the humps and bumps in the landscape. And these were dug hundreds or thousands of years ago. This same technology is also used for self-driving cars to measure the distance between the cars and objects on the road. So when I was doing my master's thesis, I thought maybe we could use this technology to automatically detect archaeology. But this had never been done before in archaeology, and experts said it could never be done at all. So when I proposed this topic to my supervisor, he told me not to bother. But I persevered. I said, I think I can do it. And I saw that geographers were using software to automatically detect landslides in the landscape. And so we used that tool, and I created a rule-based approach to find circular burial mounds in the landscape on LiDAR data. It worked well. We found about 20% of the known archaeological sites, and I got a good mark for my dissertation. <laughs> I even won an award at an international conference. But it was 20% and it was not good enough. I thought we could do better. And self-driving cars, they actually are very accurate. They use machine learning. Machine learning is trained in the same way that humans are, with lots of examples. So that's what I had to do. I had to get lots of examples of archaeological sites and train the AI. Simple enough, right? It's only one slight problem. I didn't know how to code or do machine learning. And so I uh, joined a coding course, did that for three months, and then started looking for a PhD. And I was eventually admitted here in the computer science department. And during my PhD, I worked together with um, Historic Environment Scotland, archaeologists there had been looking on the Isle of Arran uh, for archaeological remains on LiDAR data. And they had found hundreds of new sites using a manual approach. Here you can see some uh, roundhouses from the prehistoric period. And they are very visible on the LiDAR data. But actually, in field verifications that they did, it was really difficult to verify these because of all the vegetation. And so when we did our AI approach, I was actually a bit disappointed with the results. We found 200 false positives, also known as mistakes. <laughs> so I sent them back to the experts. I said, just give me the feedback, tell me what's wrong. Uh, and they reviewed these sites. And the result was actually astounding. We found 120 new site locations. And of the 80 that were actual mistakes, they could tell me that they required aerial photography and geological maps to verify those locations. And the AI didn't have access to that. Here's one of the examples of an area where the AI got really excited. The AI found a roundhouse. And this location had been seen in the manual LiDAR survey. They thought that this looks like an enclosure. So, but they weren't very sure, so they did go in there with the field survey and marked it as natural. So, when the expert saw this example, he actually said, no, I agree with the AI, this is not a mistake, this is a roundhouse. And he got together with his colleagues who actually did the field work for this, 
they reviewed the GPS tracks from that day, and yeah, they could see that they had actually walked right on top of this site, and they still thought it was natural. But that's no surprise. You've seen the landscape, it's super hilly, and it's got all this vegetation on it. So this was a really important moment for us to realize that the importance of LiDAR data and of AI. So when I finished my PhD, I started looking for what to do next. The AI worked so well, so I thought, hmm, maybe we can detect the archaeological site nationally or maybe even globally. But I also thought that I couldn't do that really in academia where I would do a postdoc, I would write papers on small incremental improvements. So I thought what I really need to do is start my own business. There was only a slight problem. I didn't know how to start a business. But I did have a friend who had started a business before. And he also did this on his PhD research. And he did it by walking into the on-campus startup accelerator. So I did the same. And I got onto their program. And I got to meet with lots of their mentors. And they were able to guide me on this journey. They had done it before. I've been able to attract several grants. And um, I was able to hire the best PhD students from my research group. And while he furthered the technology, I went out to get customers and further funding. We now have an AI that can detect lots of different archaeological sites of different shapes and different sizes, such as these hill forts. I would not have been able to create a rule-based approach with the software from my master's thesis to create rules that are complex enough to discover these monumental earthworks in the landscape. They're always optimized to the nature of the hill. And so each one of these is completely unique. But these are quite obvious examples in the landscape. Let's give it a challenge. This example of, the, of a hill fort has almost completely been plowed and leveled by the farmer. This is the AI result. It had neatly found the ramparts that are still remaining. It did get a bit confused, but in the end, it found some enclosing poly it enclosed the polygon, and it's roughly the size that we would expect it. So the great thing about AI is that the more you train it on more diverse data sets, it just keeps getting better just like an expert archaeologist does with years and years of experience. So let's look at this messy landscape where people have been living for thousands of years and they've all left their mark. The AI has been able to find quarries that were dug into these hill forts. It has found burial mounds that have mounted on top of it. And it has even found some ridge and furrow remains that are to the side of it. Those are medieval plowing um, systems. Another example of what we were able to detect here is a deserted medieval village. And this is the AI's favorite. It is really good at finding these objects because of the unique combination of objects that are held within such a site. There are houses and gardens of roughly the same size. There are hollowed out roads and it's all surrounded with rich and furrow. When the AI finds these locations in the landscape, I actually trust it more than I do myself. But I don't have as much experience as the AI. So we've been going for two years now and we've had several customers. We've now got national maps of some of the archaeological sites, and they are informing sustainable land management um, across the country. And it doesn't stop there. We have started to experiment with using LiDAR data internationally. Here you can see, see an example of what we were able to do in Mexico. The AI has been able to find house platforms, buildings, and aguadas underneath the dense rainforest. And we've also been able to use 
AI to automatically detect sites on satellite and aerial imagery. And ultimately, it is our goal to use AI to detect all archaeological sites in the world and protect these with using AI. We want to monitor sites and um, assess any changes that are going on and maybe allude to um, coastal erosion or looting because that way we can alert local heritage managers across the world so that they can protect their local heritage. Thank you.